Spanish politics somehow always managed to pull through, but this time it does feel a little bit different. It's not really up to him. His fate is going to depend on five lawmakers from the Basque country. Now, yesterday night we reported they were leaning towards uh, back in the socialist. Now, that decision is only going to be made public today, so we're going to have to wait to see that. Now, what can Rajoy do? Yesterday night I spoke to Veronica Fumana, who's a former advisor to the Socialist Party, and she said right now it only comes down to one thing, resigning. Let's take a look. El presidente Rajoy tiene en su haber una larga trayectoria de... Prime Minister Rajoy, in his political experience, has often gone for a wait-and-see approach instead of rushing into taking decisions. And this time, it's backfired on him. Right now, he can't call an election while the vote of no confidence is being processed. And the only option he's got is to resign. So Rajoy could still technically resign. That could give his government a little bit more time and possibly call a new election. But of course, all of this will depend on what the Basque Party does today. If Rajoy is ousted, what is the biggest concern from the market perspective? Because I'm looking at Spanish bonos this morning. And, you know, you're actually seeing yields come lower in Spain this morning relative to Italy, Amri. We were just seeing things turn around a little bit. Ten-year bonus, uh, Maria, just since you've been on there, two-year bonus is actually down uh, at 0 0.008, and you're looking at ten-year uh, at 153. All right, they're not collapsed. The yields aren't dropping aggressively. But what is the risk to markets and the blowout? Could the same blowout happen on your yield side? Hey, Manis, I think when it comes to risk, you have to just look at policy. You know, at one point, the Socialist Party did talk about raising taxes. They also talked about creating a special tax for banks. That in Spain would obviously mean Banco Santander, BBVA, all of this to pay for pensions. I think the biggest question mark now is that the Socialists have said they want to call a snap election, but before, they want to form a government. And we don't know for how long. Technically, once you get to office, you can stay till 2020. And the very final, I think, uh, risk here is the fact that we're going to get a very weak government. 85 seats. Rajoy has way more, and he was already struggling to get anything done. It really makes him wonder how can you be in power and stay in office with just 85 seats. I guess the sense of relief for markets here is that even if we get a socialist government, this is still a very pro-European government. It's obviously in favor of staying in Euro. There is no debate as to what Spain's place in the European Union should be under a different administration.